I want to thank everybody for joining us for today's session entitled Laboratory Data Systems Consolidation. Um, today is a co-presentation with our friends uh, at Zontal, so we're going to get into their materials in just a minute. Uh, before we do, I want to tell you a couple things about Asterix real quick. So uh, if we can go ahead and advance the slide, uh, that'd be wonderful. And we'll just get into a couple of quick uh, things. So in terms of who Asterix is and why we're hosting today's session, we are a consulting company that does work exclusively within the life science sector and have been doing so. Uh, for well over 25 years now. Uh, we were established in 1995. We work with lots of different vendors and platforms in the space. You can go to the, back to the previous slide just for one sec. Um, <clears throat> we work with a number of vendors in the space, uh, but we don't align with any, any one. Um, we operate uh, from our offices in the United States as well as overseas, and we have some uh, overseas expansion going on in, in the United Kingdom right now, which is very exciting. Uh, we have 1,200 employees, 90% of which hold some form of an advanced science degree. So very much a science-based company who works with science-based companies. Uh, we work with companies, everybody from startups to Fortune 1000, predominantly life science, chemical, CPG, but also government agencies and research institutions. Uh, so we can go to the next slide, please. In terms of the services that Asterix brings to bear, uh, we like to say that we have services that accelerate digital transformation uh, and optimizes performance across your entire ecosystem. That's gonna be everything from helping companies with uh, strategic innovation, uh, helping you understand, you know, business process analysis, what your user requirements are, helping you design application roadmaps. Uh, from there, we can help with architecture, you know, designing the architecture of your technology stack. From there, we can work with vendors uh, to do uh, selections, RFPs of the right technology that's going to fit the architecture uh, and the processes that we've put in place. From there, we can do development and implementation of those systems. We can also do the computer systems validation of those systems as well and provide ongoing application level support where needed. Uh, we can even staff. Uh, we staff both scientific personnel as well as IT personnel from the Asterix Staffing Services Group. Uh, so that's a little bit about who we are. Let's jump into our presenters for today. So I just want to take a quick moment and, and introduce our speakers. Uh, we have Christoph Gansler, who's the Director of Pre-Sales Product Marketing and David Hunt, Director of Global Alliances and Partnerships. Um, so I'm gonna pass it off to Christoph and let him kind of pick up his introduction and take us through the presentation. And I know um, we'll both be available when we get to the end for the Q&A session. So I'll sit back and enjoy the presentation, Christoph. I'll take it from Christoph for uh, now. This is David Hunt. Um, hello and welcome. Thank you very much for uh, stopping by today. We're here to talk about data. And we're here to talk about data becoming an asset instead of a liability. Basically, there's not a single company I've spoken to in the past 10 years that has not told me that they have data everywhere. They're not really able to get to it. And it takes an awfully long time to make it the least bit relevant. We've heard people speak this for an awfully long time. We've created a way to execute on that. and. The basic um, problem is that applications are always in a phase of onboarding, in production, and then decommissioned. But data never stops. Every minute of every day, there's more data that's coming in. So what are we gonna do to make the problem manageable and executable? Uh, next slide. So we're gonna talk a little bit about a case study of decommissioning an ELN, which we just talked about, is one of the applications that every laboratory just about has. Decommissioning an application doesn't have to be an ELN. It also could be a LIMS, could be an ERP, could be just about anything. The data needs to be normalized because we're going to take multiple applications and create a data platform. Once we have a data platform, we can make the data fair, which is findable accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But once we've ingested the data, we preserve the data, we're now going to make it so that we can analyze it. And once we've able to analyze it, then we can make decisions on it rather than just storing it. Next slide. So all research-based companies have data. They have to preserve it by law. They have to share the data between applications, which doesn't happen now. Even if you're on a SQL database, there's gonna be some uniqueness within each and every application that doesn't make it 
interoperable. We ingest the data from any situation, any application that you have, and we normalize it, we make it fair. We know that many informatic systems have multiple copies of data generated and stored. We're gonna be able to execute on creating this data lake that's then actionable. So Zontal, which came out of the Allotrope uh, organization back in 2016, realized that a lot of organizations and people know that there is a problem, but they're not sure how to execute on it and they're not sure how to get where they need to go get, let alone have a defined measure of success. And so we have helped a number of companies already get to that executable part and then make the data fair so that then it can be on your research and manufacturing platform so that you can onboard in production and decommission your applications. Next slide. So I'll read you a very brief quote. Novartis CEO says that we spend most of the time just cleaning the data sets. One of the actionable items that we've realized is part of the execution of solving our data problem is to ingest data, normalize it, make it fair. We talked about that a minute ago, findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable. Once we have it there, it is truly an asset. We can use it over and over again. It's like a screwdriver. Just because you've used a screwdriver once, it's integrity doesn't go down, we can use it as many times as we want, as many places as we want. And the only thing that's really gonna limit you in how you can use your data is A, the immediate need you have now or how clever you are as to what you need to do. Our next slide is gonna be a visual representation of how we do it. So diverse data, what is diverse data? That could be a laboratory equipment. That could be a spreadsheet, that could be data from your limbs, that could be from your ELN, that could be some OCR characters on the back of an envelope. We harmonize the data, we pull it in, we ingest it, we normalize it, we make it fair. We then preserve it, we know where it is, we can get to it, we can action on it. And then we reuse it. Well, how do we reuse it? We can make it visual, we can create dashboards. We can create dashboards of a visual nature that have your ELN on the top left, your limbs on the bottom right, your inventory management system in the center. Like I said before, it's only how creative you need to be and what you need to do at the present time. So we've talked a little bit about what the problem is. The problem is that we have data and it never stops accruing. We know what the solution should be, the solution should be that we take data, create a normalcy of it, we then can analyze it. And now my colleague, Christoph is gonna show you exactly how we do it. Yes, thanks David for the introduction. And I would like to start with the why we are here today and why does it matter? And we say, and everybody, well, might agree with us, but preservation of data is an investment in your future. And I tell you why that is so. So on a very high level, you would of course like to preserve your digital knowledge of your, of your company. So have you captured your digital knowledge correctly or not? So we will see by the end of my talk, what we, as Zontl think it's the correct way of preserving digital knowledge. And why is this important? Well, of course it is important if you are preserving your data and preserving your knowledge that you can come go back and look it up again. So this is more or less the, the use case that we all can uh, think about and that, that we all can agree that this is like, when did we do this and who did it? And with all of the information, that is something that we can provide with the Zontal data platform that, that uh, was just introduced. But let me take you 
on the future part of the data preservation. So when we think today that the digital economy is having all data available as inside workflows, inside business processes, but these business processes also are documented digitally and we have tools and platforms to orchestrate everything. But we are creating these assets, these data assets in various different silos. So we're bringing this data together and we have of course uh, created this data for many years. So again, we're bringing this historic data also into the same platform. So we're getting historic data, we're getting the current data, and we're forming a digital platform that is a representation of all of our knowledge, of all of our ideas around uh, how to run the business today. So when we're thinking about the future economy, that is driven by Gen C and Gen Alpha. These new, this new workforce is already today working with AI tools. So they will expect AI to be part of their daily work. So, and in AI, the difference is that we're not going back in time and search for one specific thing that we know that we did in the past and we wanna know who did that and why? No, what we would like to have in the AI context is an application that suggests and that can see that, oh, this is, this is a trend and there might be an outlier. This is something that an AI tool can do for you. But for this, in order for an AI tool that we don't even know that we will build in, in, in five years, we need to have our data and so the data needs to be available for the creation of ai tools in the future and this is this is what we're talking about today so our horizontal software today can already aggregate and preserve your digital knowledge in a platform of your of your tools that you have, of your tools that you decommission, of the tools that you have um, that you have running currently. So it's it is building the foundation of the AI tools for tomorrow. And that's why preserving your digital knowledge of today and of yesterday uh, is a preparation for the future. And I will quickly go through that, uh, through that again and take it a little bit apart. So what do we mean by knowledge retention? Well, we mean that our digital economy today has digital workflows and that we, by using, by going along these digital workflows, are producing digital data. And this digital data is consisting of mainly two parts which is the measurement itself, so the data that we measure, but it's also the metadata, like a timestamp, who measured it, when, in which lab, at which site, which project it belongs to, and so on and so on. Whatever we are currently doing in our workplace is creating lots of metadata and of course, lots of data, and it is connected through workflows. So if we preserve measurements, metadata and workflows, we're actually retaining our knowledge. And this is, this is something that will be extremely valuable, not only for your current use cases of the retained data, but it is the foundation of the future workforce AI applications. And the better you do this now, the less you have a problem with a, a a future workforce and their and building AI tools for them. So and how do we do that? 
David already said, we have, we are, our foundation is the uh, interoperable allotrope use case that is creating self-reporting data assets. And what I mean with self-reporting data asset mean this is a data packages or files in the end, packages that preserve the knowledge that you have that we just talked about in a future-proof open standard. And that is important that this is an open standard because you want to reuse that data and you want to get to that data probably with tools that are not even invented today. So it needs to be an open standard that you can get to. And I will show you how that looks already today in our tool. We also, and this is something that is extremely important for today and for tomorrow, is we all of our data that we are storing is embedded and linked to a semantic graph model. So it's semantic data, so we know what we're searching for, we search by concepts and we get we get to the data that is available in the platform. And of course, this data is available as, well, what you would like to have. The data is the tabular data many times, sometimes not, but all of these data, uh, files that we ingest and all of the data that we connect to, you know, of the data that we stream into our data and into our platform is stored in data cubes. And these again are universal data containers. They can contain any kind of data. And there's a third dimension to it. The self-reporting data assets does not only have the connection to the semantic model, it does not only have the parsed and really nice, nicely laid out data, it also contains the original data assets, means the data files that it came with. Was there a PDF? Was there some other proprietary format, uh, formatted file? Was there uh, a, like, like some kind of image some 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 pictures whatever comes with the result with our data is stored in the virtual file system so all of these three things together make a self-reporting data asset because we know what it is we have access to the data itself and we have access to the original uh, data that is there the original files so today we would like to discuss the laboratory data systems consolidation. So how is that applied? What I just said, the knowledge and the workflows together with the with the self-reporting data asset. How does that how does that come together and helps us in the data systems consolidation? Well, every long-term, even long-term systems of record have an end of life. Like all of your ELNs or wherever you're storing your data currently has an end of life. And the question is, do you have a strategy to preserve the captured knowledge once this end of life is reached? So Zontl can, and I hope that I can show you this in a short, in a, when, when I walk through a demo, uh, continuously synchronize experiment data in a lab, for example, into a vendor neutral fair data layer this with all of the semantic models, with all of the data and all of the files, without compromising the integrity of the data, without compromising audit trails, and of course, with an added retention policy. That means when the data has a shy sh shelf life, this actually is information that Zontl works with as well and deletes or suggests to delete data after uh, the the data needs to be deleted. And of course, we can we can gather all of the data from different systems into one platform for secondary analysis. And then we can go across different, uh, different questions and also today do analysis and analytics 
based on the data in your different silos, crossing these silos because we have ingested the data the right way. So everything that you have in your business systems is remaining accessible for the end user, might be on a very granular level for, I would want to look at one experiment and in the flow cytometry experiment, I would like to look at how was the gating done in this flow cytometry experiment a year ago, from a year ago. So this is a very, very specific question that you can of course go to um, back into, into the system. And this is, this is what you will find and be able to look up. So every data set that we, that we are ingesting also has a, a visual representation of the data so that you can actually see, even if you don't have that data uh, that, that data producing software anymore, you can still look at the data, not only in its tabular format, but in, the, in, in its context and the visual representation of your data. So what are we doing with the continuous application retirement? And uh, how do we actually retain the data? So if we're, I would like to take you first through our ELN decommissioning, and this is can be can have very practical reasons. Like we have like technologically obsolete platforms, and we would like to go into the cloud. So we're we have to decommission our on-premise electronic lab notebook and start a new lab notebook that is cloud native. Or the vendor of your ELN discontinues the product or creates a new version that is not compatible with the old version. Or you acquire or you are acquired by a company, merge with another company, and you have to consolidate the, the ELN systems. And so one will win and you're going into, and what are you doing with the data of the other one that you cannot directly transfer? And of course, you can have changing business needs. So this is, of course, the thing that we always have. That we're moving to a new platform. We're moving, we are installing new day, new uh, software. And so this leads us to continuously onboard and phase out applications. And the way that Zontel is looking at that is we are safeguarding data. So this is all the old data, all the historic data and the new data are landing in our Zontel platform. So given that you have, for example, a chemistry ELN and a biology ELN and another department might have another departmental department ELN, all of this information, all of the work that has gone into that, everything that is documented, is read into Zontel and creates digitalized experiments. And all of the data that comes with these experiments is stored in a database that you can access directly. So you can, after it's ingested, you can search for your data with the semantic model. You can, you can of course have your legal and regulatory reporting on your data and on all of the data. You can have your uh, data and, and, and analysis dashboards because you have direct access to the data. And you can of course feed also uh, information into, into data lakes. And you can do that directly with, with Sontal, with the platform, you don't have to do another ETL step for that. And what I would like to show you now is the middle part, it's the universal experiment and sample viewer as an example of what, of how Zontel could look like in the user interface. And I won't go into super much detail of the user interface, um, just I would like to show you instead of a live demo and you will realize soon why I'm not doing a live demo, uh, I'm showing you a uh, combi chem experiment that was saved in an ELN many years ago. And that is 
now read into, into Zonto so that the old ELN that was an on-premise ELN in this case is uh, can be retired. And so we need to really have all of the information of a rather, like in this case, a rather complex experiment available so that we can not only find it, but we can actually look into the details of every experiment. And I had to blur things because that is really a system where we have chemical structures and we have all of the information of the um, of the preparation of this reaction and so on. So if we if we're looking at this, this is the overview of the uh, of the reaction itself. Then we have the reactants, and uh, so this is all in the same in the same view. So it's just by going through the different tabs here, uh, what what aspects of your of your experiment you're looking at. And then we can go on and you see where we're going through the tabs here, the detailed tabs of the uh, of one aspect. And of course, the other over that the other tabs here also have detailed drill downs. And here we have the different products of our combi chem reactions. And of course, these are these need some some calculations. And of course, this was also inside the experiment and inside the ELN. So we have, we are capturing this as well. So all of the information that is not only the, the overview and the reaction and the, the chemical compounds, it is also the data that comes out of it, the calculations based on the, um, on the reactions that we, that we were making. And of course, every reaction creates then a sample and many samples, and these samples need to be cataloged, of course, they need to be described, and of course, they need to be analyzed. And this is what these two screenshots here are showing. So we're going through the entire process of that experiment inside the Zontal user interface. And if there were PDFs attached, we also, of course, show these PDFs. We have these PDFs available directly inside the platform. So this comes to the data and the files and all of the metadata that are needed to capture the entirety of one experiment. And it doesn't really matter if it's a biology experiment or a chemistry experiment. And just to, in, just to show you that, this is how a, a totally different and bi biolo uh, biology experiment looks like. So it's not about the data really here, but it's about how the, how it's represented and it's stored in the exact same way. It's coming out of a different ELN system and it's it's inside Zontel and it and people are able to go through the different steps and the different tabs and have the relevant information and the related information there directly with the drill down. And going back to our uh, to our original experiment. Here is a, on the left hand side, you see the entire audit trail of that experiment in that old ELN, in the de from the decommissioned ELN. So we are not only bringing in, in this case, the reactions and the calculations and the, re and, and the assay results, we're also bringing in the audit trail when was this experiment recorded? What were the steps? Who did it? And so on. So this information is also metadata that comes out of the old ELN. And this is described here. This is captured. Of course, Zontel itself has its own audit trail so that you know when it was ingested in Zontel. But this, of course, is the audit trail that is connected to the experiment itself. And on the right hand side, just to show that this experiment had um, had 12 files, in this case, 12 PDF files attached. So also these files are shown in the user interface, but of course they are also accessible inside the platform and inside this self-reporting data asset. And now 
uh, we go a little bit more into the technology behind it. And uh, you can always see the data inside Zontl that is, of course, uh, here connected via unique identifiers. And you can see the audit trail in this case. You can see the drill down. You can see the list of chemical structures, how they are present, represented inside our data lake. And this is, is the user interface for it. And that's nice and good that you have all of this information. But on the, on the right hand side, you see that actually all of this information that you can see here is stored in, in this vendor neutral format. It's the ASM uh, representation. All of that data is available in this case as an ASM JSON file. And this is the same data that you see on the right hand side that is uh, shown to the end user via the user interface. So all in all, we have a standardized approach to doing this, to doing continuous consolidation of multiple systems. And in this case, in the, in the next couple of slides, I would like to go with you through the LIMPS equivalent of the ELN that I just showed you. So for LIMPS systems, we have a very similar issue. So you might have several LIMPS systems in several sites for several uh, groups, and that makes the collaboration complex. And if you need a handover from one team to the other, that might be a tedious and very manual work. And of course, this is hard to streamline at scale. So this means that, yes, many people are looking into consolidating limb systems. But if you really want to drive consistency across your entire company, well, you need to first go through all sites and all systems and put them one by one into your corporate standard limbs. So you will have your benefit out of these systems really only after the last limb system is put and is decommissioned and put into the corporate limb system. So you can already see that this is a very, very long process and it's a very uh, disruptive process for the different sites because they have to, of course, change the way of working. They have to learn the new, uh, the new limb system, the corporate one, and they might have some ways that they cannot really do stuff anymore that is, was possible with their limbs and is not possible with the corporate limbs. So there might be data from the from their own limbs of the site of their in their site that can't even be transferred into the corporate limbs. So again, you have seen this picture before, but now uh, we have, I've I've added two limb systems here to the to the left hand side. So this is really for you to understand, it doesn't matter if it's an ELN system, it doesn't matter if it's a LIMP system, it can be an SDMS system, it can be all of the lab adjacent data silos that you have. And Zontl can directly integrate with these, read the data out of them, read the metadata out of them and the workflows and digitalize the entire entirety of the experiments or the LIMS reports or whatever you have. The result is that you have access to all of that data without the, um, even if you don't decommission the software, if you keep LIMS number one running, people will still go on working with LIMS number one, but at the same time, this data is continuously put into our data layer and is accessible for search and for and for all the other um, reasons for like data analysis and so on. So in conclusion, that 
from, from my talk today, I must say that LIMPs and applications consolidation and preservation, data preservation are really one topic that Zontal can do today and has uh, has projects for um, today to continuously aggregate data from whatever silos across the company and put it together and prepare a long-term preservation and prepare a data platform for future AI projects because we we have access to all of the data and the metadata and the workflows. So if you want to prepare for digital natives and AI natives, then you have you have the platform here when, because you can combine all of the data in one future-proof and open system. Zontal provides the ability here to really digitize lab systems. And, that, and, and we do that because we cannot only ingest all of the data, we can also send data to other lab systems. So this is something that uh, we have talked in our in our previous uh, in our previous session here with uh, with Astrix last year, and um, you can you can go through their library and will find that. So if you want to be ready to apply machine learning and AI on the entirety of your data, um, please talk to us, and I'm looking forward to your questions. Great, thank you so much, Christoph. Um, let me go ahead and uh, do a couple things here before we jump into the questions section. Um, if you weren't on right in the beginning, I mentioned that um, you can ask questions, just type a question in and we'll do our best to field it. We'll, we'll try to get as many in as we can. We'll read your question out loud. We won't read your name or your company. Today's session is recorded. So uh, once we get the video process, we'll get this up on the uh, YouTube channel uh, for Asterix. Um, that'll be linked in the email that you get from us early next week. I'd encourage you to go out, subscribe to that channel so you'll get alerts uh, when new webinars come come up, like the one with Zontal today. We have some other ones that we do, we've done, uh, the Christoph reference last year with Zontal that were really good uh, that you might want to check out as well. Um, questions, if there's questions about Asterix and the type of services that we provide, uh, there's a gentleman, Michael Zakowski is up there, M. Zakowski at Asterix Inc. is listed. And for more information about Zonal's offerings, uh, you can reach out to Christoph, the speaker, uh, directly today. You can see his email, Christoph.Gensler uh, at Zontal.io is up there as well. Again, you'll have all this contact information too when we send out uh, the follow-up email. So um, let me go and stop the recording. We typically don't record the questions, so that'll end the